This is Jeremy Kubitschek from Giant Worldwide. And if you want to maximize your potential for success, then I would recommend highly for you to subscribe to the Success is a Choice podcast. Providing insights to help you grow your business, improve yourself, and add value to those around you. You're listening to the Success is a Choice podcast, where you get a peek into the lives of industry leaders as they share their stories with you. Welcome to Success is a Choice podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Beckler. And today we appreciate the fact that Justin Moss has taken the time to spend a part of his day with us. Justin is a John Maxwell certified speaker, trainer, and coach. He is also a professional EOS implementer. Justin, welcome to the show. Hey, Jamie. Thanks a lot, man. Excited to be here. Yeah, now we're both uh, John Maxwell certified coaches, and we both uh, respect a great deal uh, the work that John Maxwell's done. Tell us a little bit about your experience with the John Maxwell team and how it came about that you joined up with the team. Yeah, so this is this goes back a long time. I think a lot of people have stories like this, but I was at a conference uh, probably 20 years ago, and John was one of the keynotes, and I was one of the guys standing in line, and I was uh, so impressed with the way he delivered, but then the the magnitude of the line that was behind him. This was 20 years ago, and when I when I was got the chance to actually talk to him, his only words to me, he looked at how young I was, I'm sure, and he's like, oh my gosh, another one of these guys. And he just said, follow me and I'll help you get where you want to go. And I just thought, how bold to say that. But here's the truth. He has been doing that for decades. And when I decided to have my own leadership training company, uh, it was a no-brainer to say, I I need to learn how does the master do it. I'm passionate about what I do. I don't necessarily want to become a mini John Maxwell because you can't replicate him. But, but I can learn from him and learn how he did what he did so I can, I can help, help more people, you know? So that's why I decided to, to become part of the JMT. And, and I've been a part of JMT, not just as a certified member, but I've joined the mentorship and I've been a, in the mentorship program for probably, well, I think all but one of the years that I've been in. So, so let's say four years I've been in mentorship and I just get to have access to their faculty. Anytime I want, I get to ask a direct question to Mark Cole, the CEO of all things John Maxwell, or Paul Martinelli, the president of JMT. And I just count that a real treasure. And so that's probably the biggest value that I get from that is I get to rub shoulders and ask real questions to the people really driving John's businesses. That is definitely a, uh, quite the benefit. Now, uh, in addition to the John Maxwell stuff that you do and and, uh, the training that you've received, you know, you do a lot of speaking, uh, a lot of leadership training on your own. Um, Yeah, yeah. You know, when you look at, there's a lot of speakers, a lot of coaches out there in the leadership field. What differentiates you from some of the others? You know, I, I, that's a great question. I, I, when I was, you know, thinking about our podcast, I was trying to think through what does differentiate me. And here's, here's what I think it is. I I think there's some people that are out there that they're just kind of a message in a box. And I, I, I think you can see through that. I've been in a lot of different conferences and, and right away I'm like, Oh, it's just, he's just, he's a parrot. And so for me, I think what differentiates me is I've really identified my core passion is, is to develop leaders, inspire teams, and build legacies that are bigger than the bottom line. So if it's a leader that just wants to you know, grow their company just to fill their pockets, uh, we're probably not going to be a good fit because I want to attach purpose to that business. And then I want to ha- help them build a world-class culture. And so I, I have a, a, it's my unique message. Nobody can copy my unique stories and my unique message and my delivery. And so I think a lot of us talk about the same exact stuff. It's just coming from different stories and different experiences. And that's what I bring to the table is I, I bring Justin Moss to the table. I'm not, even when I work with the John Maxwell material, I'm not just a parrot of John's material. No matter how good it is, I've got to bring something that resonates in my core, what I'm deeply passionate about, and I've got to communicate in a way that, that's, that's me. It's authentic, right? So I, I think that's what differentiates uh, me from others. Well, and speaking of the uh, bringing a different message and, and being you, you have a program called Building Powerful Teams. Talk about this yeah. a little bit and how it's val- added value to others. 
So um, yeah, this is this is this is another great learning with within the John Maxwell team. You, you when you watch these people uh, do what they do, you try to think, well, how do I get my message out there? And I, you know, Stephen Covey, John Maxwell, uh, you, you the list goes on. And I saw a common theme: people want value. And I had to think through even the naming of my program. I, mine is called Seven Practices for Building Powerful Teams. And, and I really believe this is not a system. Uh, these are practices that will work if you practice them. That's The practices don't work if you don't practice them, right? I, I was a college basketball player, and if I knew how to shoot, that didn't help me. I had to practice the right form. You know what I mean? And so my seven practices are, are very simple. Clarify the win. Execute the win celebrate and evaluate the win. And, and that's the foundational practices. So I have three foundational practices that the X's and O's of, of just putting together a great team is you got to know what's the short term victory. So everybody talks about vision, having a big vision. And I agree, but you got to break that vision down. You got to have some clarified wins to march on a 90 day basis. So clarify that win, execute on that win is really about our time. And we, I, I believe I, I, I have this passion, Jamie, that, that I think we're stuck. So many of us are stuck in America, and we're stuck because of this, this enemy that's holding us back. It's holding every, every facet in society. I think it's holding us back, and I've coined it habitual mediocrity. Uh, there's an ancient Chinese proverb that says, nations rise in rough boots and decline in carpet slippers. And when I look across our country... What do you think we're wearing? Carpet slippers or rough boots? And so this, this whole thing of habitual mediocrity simply says, I don't care how good you are, there's more opportunity. You can get a little bit better if you violently fight against a, your own habitual mediocrity. And really, it's really about self-awareness. And so these practices just help people think through, where could I overcome some of my own habitual mediocrity or some of my own habits that are super mediocre, like I've just settled. And so that's the first three practices. The next four are more around the emotional IQ, building influence, building trust, resolving conflict. And so the fourth practice is USDR communication. Use simple, direct, respectful communication. The fifth practice is refuse to be offended. You know, there's so many people, they leave their job because of a broken relationship with a manager, supervisor, direct report, or somebody, and, and it's just like in marriages. These practices, by the way, I made them so they will work with any team in the country, whether it's a family team, a business team, a government team, an educational team. They're real practices, and people get offended and they lose trust, and they break the relationship because of that offense. And there's enough proof that offense turns to bitterness, and bitterness actually turns to heart disease. Like I did some research, and there's just as many people die of heart disease as people die from cigarette smoke. And, wow. and I think a lot of the bitterness, a lot of the anger, before it kills us personally, it destroys a lot of teams. So refuse to be offended is the fifth practice. Remove the ripple is the sixth practice. And a ripple is simply the compound effect of a leader not addressing issues. And so a ripple defined is anything that causes destructive pain to your team. And, and what, I, what I have noticed is a lot of the teams that I work with, they have these 500-pound gorillas in their office or the, the white elephant that nobody wants to talk about. And so they're doing business as normal, and yet these issues, these ripples, are causing destructive pain to the culture, to the productivity, to the profitability of a company. And so if we don't remove that stuff, that is what's going to limit us from being able to get to that next level. And then the final practice, the, the seventh practice, is own it daily. And this is really kind of a hybrid I learned from Darren Hardy. He wrote a book, phenomenal book, by the way, called The Compound Effect. In this book is, is simply the whole idea that incremental change has massive end game result changes. And so the, tor the tortoise in the hare, right? One of my favorite quotes is that the turtle wins the race. 
what are the incremental habits that I need to own daily to get me where I want to go? So that's kind of the the seven practices for building powerful teams, and it's it's almost it's almost a scam because <laughs> it, it, I say that because it's not. It, I'm really trying to attack the person. Like if you want a better team, you have to become better, right? Yeah, John Wooden used to say the the best way to improve the team is to improve yourself. That's exactly right. And that, so that's why I say it's a scam is when people hire me, they're, they're talking about their team, and I tell them up front when they hire me is, listen, I'm, I'm, my job is to attack the person, meaning not attack them. But I want to create such an awareness event that they're like, oh, my gosh, there's so much room for me to grow. I don't have time to complain about other people. Do you find that there are uh, some teams that are easier to, uh, to build than others or some teams that are more challenging, uh, maybe different industries or different types of teams that are more challenging or easier? I, I, I would say uh, yes. I, I, I am emphatic yes. There's definitely different types of teams, but I've not found it to be in different industries. What I've found it to be is, is as goes the leader, so goes the rest of the team. So if I have a closed leader that's not transparent and they just want a, a quick hit, like, Justin, I just need to come in and help, and, and this is what our issue is, and they just hammer their people, um, then I, I just find that that doesn't go over as well because everybody's tired of the fad, right? The, okay, this is the building powerful teams fad, or this is the whatever fad. And so the teams that I see that really absorb this the most are where the leader is completely transparent and says, I'm hungry, I want to grow, I want my team to grow, I want us to be challenged personally and professionally. And usually those are the kinds of leaders where I see this just is absorbed. And then the other kind of leader that is really just trying to, mm, this sounds really bad, but they're just trying to do the right corporate thing, but they don't really necessarily believe it themselves. Mm. They just know that they're, they just know that their team needs something. Um, that just never, it, uh, I try to do the best that I can, but it just usually never has quite the impact that they are looking for because they, they don't even realize they're in their own way. Yeah, when the leader is essentially their philosophy is they need to change or they need yeah, to be exactly. better. Uh, right. A lot of times it's it's because, well, you need to be better and you need to change. But uh, right. yeah, they want they want the uh, consultant or the trainer or the speaker to come in and, and change their people so they don't have to do it. So and you and I both know that never works um, and I, I challenge, you know, I, I challenge my, the people that are hiring me, I simply let them know the difference. I said, listen, events challenge people, process changes people. If you want real change to happen in your organization, change has to start from you and the leadership team on down. Don't expect me to come in with my program at a mid-level area and expect real change to happen. Now, I'll tell you, real change will happen with those individual leaders in their individual lives and maybe in the company, but it will last very short. The, the duration of that impact will be very short if you don't change because all the results are 100% your fault. <laughs> And that's often a, an interesting discussion when you say it that way. We will be sure to put these uh, a link to uh, these seven practices in our show notes so people can explore them a little bit further. But uh, you have seven practices. Is it in order? Do they have to go in order? Is it okay if they refuse to be offended before they even clarify <laughs> the win? Is it, is it, right, a, right, right, is right. it a seven-step program or can they, can they no. actually be doing all of them at the same time? You know, uh, yeah, I, I get I get that question a lot, and the answer is no. These are practices. So if you practice clarify the win all by itself, it's going to help you. Um, if you practice refuse to be offended all by itself, it's going to help you. All I will say is when you put them all together, kind of like if I, you know, I, I played a little college basketball, if you throw a bunch of shooting guards on the same team, you might win some games because you might all get on fire and nobody can stop you, right? But but most effectively, you got to have a point guard, a shooting guard, a three man, uh, a, a low post guy, and then a center. Your big man. If you don't have all five, you're not going to have the balance. And that's where these practices work independently. 
But when you can use them together, they're even more powerful. To clarify the win and then build the habits of executing on that win and then build the right metrics to know how to celebrate your people and their progress, that's a one, two, three punch. And then to build the influence, you've got to be simple, direct, and respectful. And then realize when you're going to be direct, you have to refuse to be offended because not everybody is going to like your direct, respectful approach because they don't want to be called out. So you can't get offended when you're trying to help people. And then as soon as you see issues, you got to remove them so that they're made to build in concert, but you can use them independently. We'll return to the interview with Justin Moss shortly, but I wanted to take a moment to thank today's show sponsor, HostGator.com. They might not have cool commercials like GoDaddy.com and Danica Patrick advertising for them, but what they do have is inexpensive and easy to use websites, which is really what I care about at the end of the day. I am definitely a rookie when it comes to websites, and they were very helpful. I use them for all of my websites, and if you would like to join me and make a website or even get a new one, then I recommend HostGator.com. Use promo code SUCCESS, and our listeners will get up to 50% off the regular price. Cheap and easy. That's how I like my websites. Use promo code SUCCESS at HostGator.com. And now back to our interview with Justin Moss. Is there one of these practices that that you just find over and over again kind of trips teams up? It's the one that they have the hardest time uh, trying to grasp and, and implement in their in practice in their uh, everyday lives. Uh, you know, I would say yes. There's a couple of them that that I think you know, uh, action, action, action is where all the results are at. You can clarify a win, you can measure the win, you can be kind to people and respectful, but if you don't know how to execute the win, which is really about you assessing your time and being disciplined. Anytime I word, use the word discipline, the eyes in the room do not light up. <laughs> and that's where the rubber meets the road. It's, it's where, you know, I, I had a, a, a one of my wins was I wanted to swim seven seven miles a, a little island off of Pigeon or Caseville, Michigan, in the Saginaw Bay area up in the Thumb of Michigan, so Lake Huron, and I I wanted to swim seven miles and I promise you I couldn't just have a win I already knew what the metric was seven miles. But if I didn't get out there and swim on a daily basis for about 18 months, I never would have been able to do the seven mile swim, and so. The one that hangs people up the most is the one that, that is driving disciplined action, which is execute the win. And it's where people make the most progress from a standpoint of performance or productivity. So in the, that first set of practices, that's the hardest one. And then I think um, in the last four practices, I think that remove the ripple is one that people struggle with because it's where they're where they're challenged to identify those issues in their team or within their company that have been plaguing. Sometimes these issues have been in a company for 5, 10, 15 years, and they've just never been willing to address it. And it's the limiter. And in and, and some, some environments, you could lose your job if you really try to address the issue. And so, you know, I, I'm challenging leadership teams. You've got to be transparent. You've got to call out the issues. And that was one reason why I decided to become an EOS implementer, uh, because I, I've seen that the systems, uh, I don't know about you, Jamie, but for me, 50% of my clients, when they hire me, they say they need lead, all of them say they need leadership development. But 50% of the time, what they really mean to say is, Justin, I don't have good systems to manage my people. And so they, they just knock it off as saying they need leadership development. My team isn't where they need to be. But what they really meant to say was, Justin, we're not doing a good job of managing our systems and managing our people. And so our people aren't thriving because we haven't built the consistency of giving them systems, mm. people management system, human energy systems. And so that's why I decided to become a professional implementer be because of that very fact that I knew my seven practices were simply practices. They were not a system to drive long-term cultural change. And so that whole thing of remove the ripple and execute the win, that problem was solved when people really made the decision to own a system. Have you had that same experience? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I've, had a, I've had a lot of what you talked about earlier where the leader doesn't want to change. 
Um, yeah. and, and there's maybe not even a clarity of what it is that they need to change and, and do better. Um, you know, they want you to just be a magic, you know, a magic man or want you to yeah. uh, work miracles yeah. Um, yeah. when, when it's a deeper, you know, or, or they want you to just come in and, and you know, hey, here's, uh, here's one great quote or one great thing to think about. And now all of a sudden we've changed. And it goes back to what you said with one of the biggest obstacles or one of the biggest struggles people have is going from the clarify their win to the execute their win. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. most of us know what to eat. You know, we know that we need to <laughs> exactly. eat vegetables and fruits and, and we know we need to go to the gym, but we don't always do it. And so, right. you know, just because we know it doesn't mean we're actually doing it. And, uh, yeah, um, the, honestly, uh, Jamie, that was for me, execute the win I, when I started my leadership training company, this is after I was a financial advisor with Edward Jones. I was offered limited partnership in the first four years of my career there. It was after I started a, a with my brother, it was his passion, I helped him start a nonprofit leadership development organization called Five Star Life. We grew the organization from zero volunteers to 300, from impacting 50 students that first class to, uh, I think it was like 2,700 students a week during the school year, and I did that for seven years, and when I left that to start my leadership development company, I still had this massive, nagging, habitual, mediocre habit, and it was procrastination. I was not an executor of even what I wanted to do. I was procrastinating. And when I read that book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, he's become a, he's, he is my productivity mentor. Um, and I've followed him for years now. I actually brought him in to speak to my community at one of my leadership events. But, but he had a little thing in there that, that, was, that was about, you got to own your day. And you got to create this agenda. And so literally for the past five years, I create a daily agenda and on the left-hand side of the page and on the right-hand side of the page, I track my reality. I don't do it as much now because I'm, I'm way more effective at my day, but still every day that I do this daily agenda, I probably have 15 journals filled pages with just daily agendas that I write out and I track my reality, meaning I held, hold myself accountable to my actions. Did I do what I said my best day was going to be? And I, I probably get 40% more of the right work done daily because of that daily agenda, which is all about execute the win. Other than maybe starting that earlier and, and coming to that realization after reading Darren Hardy's book, is there something that you would have done differently during your career? Oh, Absolutely. You know, Maxwell talks about this in his um, uh, Today Matters book. Um, there's 12 questions that he asks himself, and he is pretty transparent about where he, where he thought he was good and where he messed up and what he would wish he would have done differently. For me, I was a financial advisor at the age of 23. Um, they offered me limited partnership and, and honest to goodness, this is embarrassing to say, but I wish I would have taken more control over my finances in my twenties, um, so that I could have the opportunity and the impact and the, the freedom in my forties. Uh, now I, for seven years, I helped my brother start a nonprofit entity, uh, my brother, and my dad. And it is having crazy impact. But, but by leaving Edward Jones and, and in that time frame, not taking great care of my finances, um, I, I was basically starting from zero when we started that nonprofit. And I don't know if you understand what a nonprofit is, but it's, it's a nonprofit. And so, so there was very little money. I was trying to raise a family, and I didn't have any real capital to invest into a business and you know my regret is I did not create a revenue stream beyond my daily grind and I wish I would have done something different to make that happen because even now I love what I do leadership development impacting teams coaching train all that stuff I'm gonna do this the rest of my life but I'm fighting right now I'm trying to find ways to generate revenue where I'm a business owner and I don't have to just get paid to speak. And so I, I wish I would have taken more serious the advice they gave all my clients in my 20s because I helped a lot of my clients. 
but I didn't help myself. <laughs> Great advice there, and hope, hopefully someone will take that advice and uh, yeah. take it to heart and use that. And uh, where can people connect with you? Where can they find out more about you and, and the services you provide? JustinMost.com. Excellent. Most is M-A-U-S-T. So JustinMost.com is the best place to find me. Great. And we will uh, be sure to put those in the show notes as well. Um, so people can go back to those. I would like to end up with just a couple uh, rapid-fire questions real quick off the top of your head. Is there any other books or podcasts that you would recommend? One of my heroes, one of my mentors, uh, Bob Chapman, he wrote a book called Everybody Matters, The Extraordinary Power of Taking Care of Your People Like Family. Bob is the real deal, amazing story of what he's accomplished. Uh, I brought him into my Lead USA event this past May. But if you really care about your team and if you really want to have purpose beyond profits, not more than profits, purpose and profits go together. But I, there's nobody in the world, in my opinion, that has this more dialed in than Bob Chapman, and he's the real deal. It's not just a, a platform. He's, he's 70 years old or 72 years old, and he's still running harder than most people I know in their 50s because he's on fire to tell people they matter in his companies. Who would you like to meet or spend time with that you don't already know? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I, there's a couple people I would love to uh, meet and spend time with. One of them is um, Bob Buford from the book Halftime. Uh, I've read some of the information. Uh, he basically talks about turning success into significance. He's, he's definitely one of them. And then honestly, uh, I would love to spend some time with uh, Bob Chapman and his team more. I've, I've already met him, but there's some people in his team that they are just killing it. And so they're, it's really just getting to know the Barry Waymiller companies mm -hmm. and how they do what they do. That, that, that would be where I'd want to spend time. Great. What is a productivity tool, app, resource, or a piece of software that you'd have a hard time doing without? My, my daily agenda is what I told you. It's I... I I get 30 to 40% more done every day of the right work and there's no technology that can improve that simplistic approach of me making my day powerful. If you were on any reality show, which one would it be? Survivor. My wife, she, we always talk about, I would love to be on Survivor, not because of all the games, but just the, the radical experience it provides. Uh, you said you wanted to you know, do this job that you're doing for the rest of your life. You love it. If you weren't speaking and adding value to others as a speaker coach, what would you want to do if you could do anything? I am uh, not even what I want to do. I will do. I'm going to own companies and I'm going to be building world-class cultures because my passion is building teams. And so I don't want to just talk about it. I want to do it personally. There you go. Building powerful teams. Justin Moss, thank you so much for adding value and, and providing some insights to us today. Man, Jamie, thanks for your time. God bless and all that you do, man. Justin provided some great insights today into how to build a team. His insights were spot on, and I strongly encourage you to check out the show notes to see how you might be able to connect with him. Thanks again for listening to today's show. Please take just a quick second to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. And until next time, remember that success is a choice. What choice will you make today?